In our first joke of the day, we bring you a boy who want to have five wives. A five-year-old boy watched a story on the TV about an emperor and all his wives. Once the story was finished, he turned to his parents that were sitting on a couch and said, Mommy, when I grow up, I would also like to have five wives. Now what do you want to do with five wives? One will cook nice food for me, one will go and walk with me, one will clean the house for me, one will bathe me, and the last one will sing for me. Then at night time, I don't have to accompany you to sleep anymore. At this stage, the boy thought for a minute. Then he said, Okay, that won't work, because I still want to sleep with you, Mommy. Mom's eyes were filled with tears of happiness. Then she asked, But who will your five wives sleep with then? Let them sleep with Daddy. Dad's eyes were filled with tears of happiness. <laughs> In the next joke, we bring you some African animals and a bottle of moonshine. The rabbit was walking through the bush when he saw a bottle of warm moonshine lying in the sun. He took a sip and immediately passed out. A little while later, the jackal came walking past, saw the rabbit lying there and the bottle of moonshine. The jackal think, before I eat the rabbit, I am going to have a sip of that moonshine. So, he took a sip, but immediately passed out. Then the hyena came walking past saw the other two and the bottle of moonshine and think, I am going to eat those two, but we'll first have a bit of the moonshine. Took a sip and immediately passed out. Now the lion came past, same story as the other three, and he also passed out. Sometime later the rabbit woke up, have a look around, and saw the other three passed out. He thinks to himself, I am never going to drink again. I just become too aggressive. Our next joke is about a mother-in-law that have disappeared. My mother-in-law have been staying with us for many years when she disappeared. We haven't seen her for the last two weeks. Yesterday, a police officer came by to speak with us. He said, I think all of you must prepare yourselves for the worst. Now, I must go find all her clothes that I threw away, as well as all her extra stuff that I gave away. If we must prepare for the worst, then she is definitely coming back. Our next joke is about sleeping tablets. While my wife was at the doctor for a normal checkup, she asks the doctor, Doctor, my husband works very hard. He is extremely tired at night. Is there anything you can do to help him? That's no problem, ma'am. Here are some sleeping tablets. Thank you so much, doctor. And at what time in the evening should my husband take these tablets? Oh no, let me explain. Your husband is the one that needs to rest. The sleeping tablets are for you. Our next joke is about a guy in a taxi who is having his phone stolen. This guy was sitting in the back of a taxi going through his messages on his mobile phone. He then received a message from his wife. The message read, Are we making love tonight? He vigorously starts to write his response, but just as the message was ready to be sent, a guy stuck his hand through the taxi's window, grabbed the phone, and ran off with it. He immediately jumped out of the taxi and shouted at the guy. Stop, stop. I don't care about the phone. Please just press send. <laughs> In the following joke, a guy is cleaning his house when he found some bottles. John is busy cleaning his house. It's being sold. He lost his house, lost his job, lost his wife, and she took the kids because of his drinking problem. While busy in the garage, John comes across some boxes and kicks one box and hears bottles inside. John opens the box, sees it as his empty alcohol bottles. He then takes the first empty bottle out, looks at it and said, Because of you, I lost my house. He took another bottle out, looked at it and said, Because of you, I lost my job. He took a third bottle out and said, Because of you, my wife and kids left me. Then John takes a bottle out, but this bottle is still full. He looked at the bottle, puts it one side and said, You got next to nothing to do with this. <laughs> the next joke is about a couple getting a divorce and need to split everything. Let me tell you about this couple with three children that was getting a divorce. They decided to divide everything up amongst themselves. In court, the judge asked, And the children? Well, the couple chatted amongst themselves for a couple of minutes, and then the husband said, 
You honor as we cannot divide the three children amongst the two of us. We have decided to try for a fourth child. Then we can easily divide the children between the two of us. Court was adjourned. The only problem was that nine months later, this couple had twins. <laughs> In the following joke, just don't step on the ducks. Three women die and go to heaven. The angel says, We only have one rule, don't step on the ducks. So, they enter heaven, and there are ducks all over. It is almost impossible not to step on a duck. They try their best to avoid them. The first woman accidentally steps on one. The angel says, Your punishment for stepping on the ducks is being chained together for eternity with the ugliest man. The next day, the second woman steps on a duck, and the angel says, Your punishment is chained to the most extreme, ugliest man. The third woman, not wanting to be chained for all eternity to an ugly man, very carefully looks where she steps. She goes months without stepping on a duck. One day, the angel comes down with a handsome guy and chains them together. I wonder what I did to deserve this. I don't know about you, but I stepped on a duck. <laughs> the next joke is hilarious. It's about some medical students. First-year students at med school were receiving their first anatomy class with a real dead human body. They all gathered around the surgery table with the body covered with a white sheet. The professor started the class saying, as a doctor, it is necessary to have two important qualities. The first is that you are not disgusted by anything involving the human body. The professor pulled back the sheet, stuck his finger in the butt of the corpse, withdrew it and stuck it in his mouth. Go ahead and do the same thing, he told his students. The students freaked out, hesitated for some time, but eventually took turns sticking a finger in the butt of the dead body and putting it in their mouths. When everyone finished, the professor looked at them and said, the second most important quality is observation. I stuck in my middle finger and licked on my index finger. <laughs> in the following joke, I ask you all to think about this poor guy. Always think about those people going through a rough time. I mean, my wife left me for another man. All that is left now is a pointless, lonely, miserable life. And while you might have normality in your life, I ask you to think about that poor guy being with her now. <laughs> in the following joke, these three mothers each have a different obsession. These three mothers and their small children were at a psychiatrist for group therapy. He observed them for some time playing with their children. And then he said, I have observed all of you mothers, and you all have obsessions. He then turned to the first mother and said, You are obsessed with eating. This is why you called your daughter Candy. The first mother was very surprised and acknowledged this. He now turned to the second mother and said, You are obsessed with money. This is why you called your daughter Penny. The second mother was very surprised and acknowledged this. He then turned to the third mother, but before he could say anything, the mother grabbed her son by the hand and said, Come on, Dick, we are leaving immediately. <laughs> In our last joke of the day, we ask why mothers-in-law are so weird. Families are weird. Now hear me out on this one. Do you have a mother-in-law? Do you think she is smart? Then please explain this to me. My daughter's husband helps her with everything in the house. He is a wonderful man. The best son-in-law you can ever have. Now imagine, that shoe is on the other foot. And it's her son helping his wife with everything. My son helps his wife with everything in the house. She is a lazy housewife. She is the worst daughter-in-law one can ever have. You can now understand why I just don't get it. <laughs>